everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do question 9 from the Compound Data 2 workshop. Uh, so in this question here, it's very similar to the previous question, well actually no, it's not similar to the previous question, but we're doing something similar, we're designing a function. Um, but in this case, the parameter two-dimensional array that we're passing in um, is the array that we want to be changing. So it's okay that it's a shallow copy because what we want to be doing is when we pass in an array, we want to update the contents of that array. Uh, so any changes we make to data, in this case, we'll also be making to R. We know because that's a shallow copy. Um, great, so let's have a look at what we are trying to do. So we're writing a function called make absolute that when passed a two-dimensional integer array, makes each negative item in the array positive. So it makes every item absolute. So I've already got my structure here. Um, I know that there's no return value here because we're not returning anything, there's no output. But we are having an effect, we're changing the values of data. Uh, okay, so let's uh, do some planning here. So we need to loop through each main array. <coughs> And then loop through each subarray, and then um, for each item, make it its absolute value. Absolute value. So this question is actually a little bit easier than question eight, I think. If you have a good understanding of how shallow and deep copy works, and if you understand that passing in an array or a two-dimensional array as a parameter into a function will create a shallow copy, then this is quite an easy question um, because it's told us as well we can use the abs method here, uh, which is an inbuilt maths method inside processing that will uh, input a value and output the absolute value of that number so we don't have to do that ourselves. So we have a plan here let's go and implement it. So uh, we need our outer loop which we've seen many times and then here I want my inner loop for each subarray And again, we'll make this scalable for two-dimensional arrays of any dimensions. And then for each item, we want to make it its absolute value. So array i k is equal to the absolute value of itself. Oh, I'm used to writing array, it's data. Um, too many brackets, there we go. Um, and that's all we need to do for this question. This one's quite straightforward. So if I run this, I ran this already before I implemented this method. Um, the array should become this because that's the absolute value of these numbers. When I ran it, it didn't do that because I hadn't implemented the method yet. So now these should all be positive numbers. Awesome, and that works well there. Um, Easy. So that's how you do that question. Maybe you want to add some more tests. That's fine. It's up to you. Um, yeah.